another video. Guys, welcome. Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. What is he doing at Dover Castle? I hear you screaming at your devices. Surely that's an Iron Age fort with a Norman castle on it. Well, let's go and see about that. Or alternatively, it's known as the location for the 1971 Doctor Who story, The Mind of Evil, where it doubled as Stangmore Prison. Surely they're not so desperate for likes and subscribes that they're playing the Doctor Who card now that the imminent return of everybody's favourite David Tennant is nearly upon us. Well, absolutely not. I refute that. If you can see poking its crenulations above the wall over there, we have something mighty fine to go and have a look at. Something that absolutely needs to be captured in our gazette. And the reason is that this is home to the tallest Roman UK structure. And I do apologise if that last sequence was a little bit too much BBC local regional news. And here it is, guys, the moment of the big reveal. I give you the Roman Pharos at Dover Castle. Arguably the most amazing survival that we've uh, yet encountered on the Roman Gazette. And not only the tallest, also one of the oldest, believed to have been constructed 46 to 50 AD, not long after the Roman Conquest. Unfortunately, due to Namby Pamby English Heritage Health and Safety concerns, you can't get to the top of the lighthouse, but we can go in it. You've got to give it to those Romans. They were pretty confident about their conquest of Britannia to build this so quickly. And another one over the other side as well. Let's go and have a look inside. <laughs> I'm probably even going to say awesome to keep the TikTok generation on board. I've got to say it again, guys. Awesome. I don't know about you, but when I look at the thickness of the walls on this structure, it just takes my breath away and I have to take my hat off to them. Pretty incredible, I'm sure you will agree and soon to be celebrating its 2000th birthday. The original Roman structure survives to its first three stories, and I've reached the uh, limit of the gimbal there, so we're bringing some sort of overlay to finish this bit off. Um, apparently it was eight stories when originally constructed. The fourth story that you can see today is a medieval addition dating to sometime in the early 1400s. And that's really the key to the Pharisees' success at surviving in Britain, where our Roman-built legacy was thrown away uh, quickly elsewhere. The building has carried on being used for much of its post-Roman life. Once it ceased to be a lighthouse to guide the Classis Britannica across the English Channel, not that it was called the English Channel at that uh, time, it has had a number of different uses. At one stage, it was used to store gunpowder, but probably the main key to its survival is that it was adapted as a bell tower for the Anglo-Saxon church that you can see next to it, which is called, I believe, St. Mary in Castro. You can see the top section is quite different in style, and that uh, dates to the time in the 1400s when it was adapted to be the church bell tower. As a bell tower, it was actually joined in the gap that you can see there to the church at one time. This was the point where it joined, and I'm not too sure, but I suspect that this door is an original door to the Pharos that uh, lined up perfectly with where they built the church. Maybe that's why they did that. As you can imagine, our good friend William Stukeley visited here and was very excited. He did a lovely picture of it, uh, which I put up as some sort of uh, overlay. Um, and incidentally, I now see myself as the 21st century equivalent to William Stukeley, but just on YouTube rather than on paper. 
Now, very quickly before the public uh, arrive, that's the view across the English Channel. I can actually see France today, even though it's a little bit murky. And there was another Roman Pharos across the channel there. I'll put the name down there because I can't pronounce it properly. And there's France across the English Channel. It is a good job I took those anti-nosebleed tablets today. Despite the later medieval flint refacing which exists in part on the Pharos, the Roman structure presents itself really well. What a uh, modern way of saying it presents itself really well. The windows and the doors are uh, very fine and uh, emotionally I find this place transports me back to the very earliest days of Roman Britannia like no other site that we visited on the Roman Gazette. Pretty squeetastic, I'm sure you will agree. Now I may have mentioned, or I may have not mentioned, it's not that well scripted, you know, that the Ferris we've been having a look at was one of two. This is on the Eastern Heights, and uh, they had another Ferris, the other side of the Roman Harbour on the Western Heights. Now, that one did survive, uh, but hasn't done so well in the last 300 years or so. And in an exclusive for the Roman Gazette, we're gonna go and see if we can find what's left. Guys, I'm really sorry. I'm having to report to you that our attempt to show you the second Ferris at Dover on the Western Heights has failed. And the reason for our researchers' dismal failure was that they neglected to check and find out that the second Pharos at Dover is located up there on the top of what is known as the Drop Redoubt. To manage your disappointment, we'll put some sort of overlay up, which will show you that we're not actually missing that much. It's basically just a lump of Roman masonry. <laughs> Known as the Breeden Stone and the Devil's Drop of Mortar, the remains of the second Pharos at Dover actually gave their name to the fort when it was first developed in the 1700s, the Drop Redoubt. I don't know if you've seen some sort of overlay yet to show how disappointing it is. It's just a lump of masonry. It was completely lost in the first development of the fort in the 1700s, but rediscovered in 1804. So we've got Napoleon to thank for that. Uh, and the foundations of the Pharos can still be seen apparently in one of the rooms in the redoubt, but uh, access is now limited. I hope you enjoyed that, guys. Please like and subscribe. We appreciate all the support that we could get. We're not going to have a clunky ending. I've now copied another YouTuber. Perfect way to end it. It's really cool, really funky. So until next time, stay tuned. Oh!